Uh, we're coming up on our five years uh, next year. Um, and, you know, like any small business, you've got five years to basically do something or fold and, and, and go do something else. Um, I'm, I'm pretty sure we'll do next year. <laughs> um, yeah. I need to go to the next year. But, you know, if, if history is, is going to repeat, um, and I think it's just going to continue to get bigger and better. Um, and I'm excited for the future. Uh, just need a couple of days to rest afterwards, and then we'll hit it hard. <laughs> we'll hit it hard. Um, so, again, thank you for, uh, for all of you being here. Um, so, we want to we kind of go through this pretty quick. Everybody's tired. It's, it's, been, a, it's been a good weekend. But and we got the parties coming up. And we got the parties after party coming up, which is, you know, this is the only thing that's keeping me from a glass of red wine. So. Um, but last year we kind of had a little format that we started uh, where we actually brought the judges to stage to, uh, to announce their winners. We really want to hear, I mean, I'm looking at my sheet right here, and 80% of the, uh, the winners tonight, I have no, no idea who they are. And I want to know who they are when the audience learns them. Because I've been watching these films all year long. And I've been critiquing them my own way, making sure it fits the film festival uh, theme or, or it, you know, it matches you know, our audience or our community, making sure we have the right stuff. But now we turn that all over to the judges. And we, we give the judges a lot of creative control <coughs> on how they, how they judge a film. And they look at the disciplines uh, you know, we don't just pick anybody to judge a films. We know that when we assign a judge a category, that, that that judge, they know what they're doing. So we don't need to be uh, micromanaging the process. We don't need to be saying, well, well, how did this score over here? And how did this? That's not how we do it here. And maybe we should, maybe we should, don't know. But this is how we do it. And we turn it over to the judge, and we ask you to, to judge the disciplines and all the characteristics of the film. Uh, the production value, the, uh, the lighting, the cinematography. Um, and so we're going to call each one of the judges. I think all judges are here except for Dee Shaw and, um, and, and Stephen Estep. Uh, so, we, so we're very uh, thankful that the judges will be up here to, to announce these. Um, I'm trying to think I've said so much. Um, just, just thank you for coming here, especially for the awards. It's a very important thing. I guess the main thing I just want to say is we don't know who these winners are. And that's the, that's the fun part. That's what makes it such an exciting October 5th, as okay. Tryon International Film Festival Day. Uh, so that's... Uh, so whatever that means, I think it's kind of cool. So far, I mentioned, so I sent it to, uh, to Mayor Peoples, and, uh, and he wrote back, yeah, great, that's cool. <laughs> so, um, but anyway, um, I, th I thought that was kind of neat. So, but let's get started, and um, we're going to get started with our best student film, and our judge for best student is Nishal Pudel. And a lot of you in the audience know Nishal. Unfortunately, you could not be with us this year uh, because he is continuing the, the, um, the opportunities that he's been given to continue to produce and, and, and direct films. And he's on his seventh film now since he started at this film festival in 2015. He's now, I think, on seventh. And he's actually in Tibet right now, uh, working on a film project. And, and he, uh, we were texting, and he, or uh, doing the Facebook Messenger thing, and, and he says, "There's no way I can get to Kathmandu to fly to Tryon because from Tibet to Kathmandu is like 14-hour commute from like plane, trains, and automobiles." Uh, so I, I said, I said, I said, "Don't worry, Nishal, I'll, I'll, uh, I'll introduce this award for you." But, uh, but Nishal is somebody that's no stranger to Tri National Film Festival. He told me and promised me he'll be back next year. Uh, this, is, this, is, this is one of his favorite places. He says, of all the film festivals he's been to around the world, Tryon is his home. So, uh, so Nishal, thank you for coming to me. So uh, his, his, best, um, his category is Best Student Film. And, um, and the winner for Best Student Film is Mafi Osa. Uh, Matthew Walsong. Uh, so I don't think Matthew is here with us. Uh, we're very excited. We have his award that we will uh, we'll give to the family. Um, this is probably about the time we'll cue the music. Yeah. <laughs> I am incredibly lucky. I did pick it up. 
I'm gonna need you to come to stage right about now. <laughs> um, my beautiful wife, Ashley Minitree. <laughs> I did forget about it. No, no, no. I'm going to turn over to you. I'm going to go down. Okay, we'll be here as a couple of years. Well, basically, I was supposed to um, come up here and tell you about the awards before we started giving them away. But that's both. Um, so this year, we sat down for a very long night with many glasses of wine. I know, right? Me? No. Um, what were we going to do? So we've done vintage cameras, we've done, um, the first year we did vintage film reels, and then last year we did Year of the Horse, the gold vintage horses, so we were like, oh, what are we doing? Um, so, anyway, after a few drinks, we came up with copper boards, and while it was a fabulous idea of mine, I can't help myself, um, <laughs> I cannot paint 15 Clapperboards by myself, so I was like, aha, I'm gonna get all my girls to do it for me. So I wanna tell you who did these awful awards. They painted them. I told them that this was their blank canvas, they could do whatever they wanted. And then I would actually put the award part together. And uh, so Katie Hargrove did two of my awards for me, which goes to Best Actress and Best Supporting Actress, Carrie Bass. Um, she is Human Rights and Dignity. Um, and then Jocelyn Davis did three best in my And Corey McNabb, Susan McNabb's brother, did one for me. Chuck Matern, um, Ashley Minitri, uh, Lydia Younger, Becky Collins, Susan Ruby, Will Barcliffe, who's the new ED at the tri Arts Festival, and then Jennifer Mills, which is well known in town as well. So, um, women take the award. We love Ashley. She's love you, baby. <laughs> 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 Her? One that says trippy. Oh. Kind of so it's like a trophy, but it's a trippy. Last year we had the pleasure of having uh, a film in, in play that actually won, and it was by it was called Bound, and Delgit Kelsey Dell. Um, we just got to know, and we asked him to be a judge of the best short category, which is huge. And so we're very honored to have Dell. Uh, he had harvest season here, and uh, we're going to bring him up to the stage and have him talk about his show. Why don't I just do this? Is that yeah. Yeah. All right. Find out uh, completely by accident you can walk down Trade Street with a beer in your hand. Uh, <laughs> that's a good thing. Uh, but thanks to Kirk and Bo and Robin and Lydia and literally everyone who made this event possible. It's a great event. It's my second year here. I'm hoping there's going to be a third year here. Uh, so thank you all. Try on. Uh, I'm going to actually be shooting my next film here, too, next week, thanks to uh, uh, Jerry here. Thanks to Jerry. Uh, and really looking forward to that. But best short, there were so many great short films this year. Uh, many of them by people that I know, and I was really struggling with, well, how am I going to be a fair judge? I really like this, you know, this particular film, because I, I know the people who are in it, and this, that, and the other. Uh, so it was, it was a difficult choice, and I, I was up very late last night when I got home from the wonderful Tito's Gala uh, <laughs> with, with another uh, drink in my hand, but that's another story. Uh, Rewatching my, my top five films to see if I can go ahead and, and, and finally whittle one down, and I went with uh, one from a group of uh, filmmakers. I believe they're from North Carolina. Um, they had three films in this festival, all great films, and I could see a progression uh, in each of the films that I watched, and the one that stuck with me um, put a new spin on this archetypal character, 
uh, that I hadn't seen before. And it also had this uh, great tracking shot that I'm sure Martin Scorsese would appreciate if he saw it through the house as these characters were walking in in one of the, one of the three segments that it deals with. Um, so the film that stuck with me the most, and it's, it's one that caught my eye initially, and, and always when I'm thinking about which films do I like, it was one of the, the top ones. And I'm going to butcher the title of it, because my Latin is not great. I'm just going to put a little South Carolina on it and call it Interitum. Oh, yeah. <laughs> That's actually well, that well deserved. Uh, Honeyhead uh, Films out of Wilmington. Uh, they're uh, up and coming, and they're they're doing wonderful things. They they wanted to be here, but they're again on their next film shoot and, uh, and could not. Uh, Mr. Lavin Cuddy, uh, he's no stranger to uh, to our film festival. <laughs> Lavin was one of the founders of uh, the Shrine National Film Festival and a close friend of ours, and we wanted you to. Help us with our short documentary. So, Mr. Cunningham, you, sir. Thank you very much, Bo. Well, as Bo said, uh, I've been up here before, uh, doing shows, working with TRIF. Uh, I'd like to thank you all for coming to TRIF 2018. Uh, this is a milestone year for them. Uh, it crests them into the fifth year. And, and that's an important year in the film festival, uh, in the film festivals themselves. Number 10 is next, Bo, by the way. <laughs> uh, getting back to why I'm here, I'm judging short docs. Now, uh, I hope that you were able to see those. They, they are short, and what I enjoy about them is uh, think about the difficulty that a filmmaker has to go through to tell a story in anywhere between 3, 15 minutes, 20 minutes, it's difficult. It's difficult to package it in. I've had quite a few docs that I looked at, and they were from all over the world. Uh, I felt that these particular pieces were by far and large the best things that I saw here at the film festival, simply because they were true, they were very production worthy, and so I will give you my vote for the best short documentary, and that is, hopefully you've seen it, by director Michael Miller, Mrs. Schneider, 2018. I'll tell you a little bit about this film before I, before I leave. Uh, this was an extremely sensitive, introspective film from a man who recalls the moment in his childhood where he turned a page and rediscovered what was actually going on in the world as a child. Man's inhumanity to man. It's a beautiful film. If you have not seen it, you may be able to find it on but I suggest that if you do have an interest, please do, and thank you very much. Uh, this next uh, award category has to do with human rights and dignity, and this is going to be, as I, th I think I've told many people, this is going to be a category that we're going to be doing f for as long as we do a film festival because of the importance. Um, our friend Homera Salir in Switzerland is, has been a judge with us, I think, in her third year. She's an advisor. She's done so much as far as uh, sponsoring the film festival and, and so on. Um, there are these, these uh, films are very challenging to watch. Um, so I'm gonna let her make these choices. We have a recording of her she sent from Switzerland. And the first one I'm going to uh, talk about is a full length feature. And this is again Homero Asselier for my choice of a full-length movie uh, for Trial International Film Festival. My choice goes to Detainee, which is a tough movie to watch. However, we have to remember, bear in mind, that if it is tough for us to watch it, this tortures 
and this treatment uh, of others has really occurred. Um, and I wanted world. to share with you my choices and the reasons behind them. Um, for a short uh, film about uh, human rights, I have chosen this honor, which is about female genital mutilation. I applaud Trying International Film Festival because we are together tonight standing up for the rights of millions and girls and women together. Have a wonderful evening. And we're so happy to be here. I wasn't planning on saying anything, but um, move over here so we can try camera. I I just think I, I feel so honored that um, Tryon took our film and, and showed that he's been such a incredible supporter of it. Uh, the cause is clearly important, but more people need to know about it before it will come to an end. And I think this is the first step um, in, in getting to that objective, is having festivals like Tryon celebrate the film, and other festivals hopefully will do the same. So thank you for your support. And I This honor was actually one of the first films that uh, was, was submitted for the 2018 uh, program. And uh, so uh, that film, I've been kind of watching it, and, and it's, it's, it stuck with me from the first time I watched it. And I, I think I knew from the beginning, even though I'm not a judge, I had a feeling that uh, we would be hearing a lot more about it. So Terrence, thank you so much uh, for, what, for what you've done uh, for, for mankind. Uh, next, we're going to celebrate um, uh, best full-length documentary film, and uh, no stranger to try on North Carolina, and we also had just a wonderful interview with them on stage. Uh, they came in 2016 uh, with their with their with their film American Epic, uh, and is it, I think it really is one of the best documentaries uh, of our time. Um, and so we had this opportunity, and we we're like, would you guys be a judge for us in, uh, this year? And, so, uh, without further ado, best full-length documentary wow. film, Carter McMahon, Dallas and Florida. Um, it's a pleasure to be back in, uh, in, in Tryon and have your wonderful hospitality. Um, I want to congratulate Bo, uh, Bo and Kerr on um, continuing the festival and, um, and uh, a big hats off also to, uh, to Gail and Scott for restoring that magnificent old theatre. Um, um, uh, judging, this is the first time we've ever judged the documentary category and it's quite interesting to be on the other side of the, of the podium. Um, uh, all these films, I think, speak to the vital role that uh, documentaries have in our society now that we're living in a very fractured and polarized media. Um, and long-form documentaries, by their, their scope, allow the viewer to, um, on a kind of molecular level, understand what the attitude of the filmmaker that's making the film is, and also, if the film is well made, to have a deep empathy for the subject of those films. And I actually think that now documentaries are kind of our global conscience. Um, we thought that all these films uh, were impressive uh, this year. Um, there was a fascinating selection. Um, two films that were struck by um, were made by film, not traditional filmmakers, they were advocates of the subjects they were, they were making films about. I either, so one was uh, um, Murder on the Reef, which was about the destruction of the Great Barrier Reef, 
and that was made by a guy that's been campaigning for, to save it. And similarly, another one called Never Again, which was made by a lady that's part of a group that is looking to put together an institute that will address um, uh, crimes against humanity across the world and make nations globally accountable. So it's pretty impressive that someone would actually be working this and actually make for the first time a whole film. So just, we haven't awarded these films, but we just like to applaud them as being really great and that these people did this. Struck by war crimes, which some of you may see, which was a very moving story about um, uh, um, children um, uh, that were uh, that were captured, um, kidnapped as well, kidnapped as teenagers and conscripted into the army um, in, in Nepal, and uh, and uh, and, um, and what they had to deal with. But um, moving on to the actual award itself, the best full-length documentary feature. Um, We'd like to give uh, to film by Ron Davis that you would, have, I think, a lot of you have seen. <laughs> called Life in the Doghouse. <laughs> uh, when I read about this film, I didn't actually think I was actually going to be enjoying this movie. <laughs> um, uh, I was more of a cat person, um, <laughs> but it's incredibly film as you as you all saw it's the story of these two men that basically sacrificed their entire lives to kind of look after these animals and then I think by the conclusion of the film or by the edit finishing the conclusion of post-production they'd actually saved twelve thousand dollars. Um, I was as a filmmaker I was incredibly impressed we were both incredibly impressed by how quickly they established the premise of their film that Ron established the premise of his film which was that you know in the first three minutes, I, I understood for the first time that four million animals euthanized every year in America, which was a staggering figure. And I think if any of us had to guess what we thought, we would need to be close to this. Um, I thought that they established, that he established enormous empathy with the two subjects um, of the film. It was shot really elegantly. Um, and it's really a film about self sacrifice and charity. I personally found I could transpose what they were doing onto any charitable activity. Um, it was inspiring. And when I finished watching that film, I actually remember turning to Alison and saying, What could we do to help him? In this award I'd like to, to give to, uh, to, we'd like to give to Ron Davis for um, my job. I'd like to honour another film which really stood out, a beautifully filmed and emotional and powerful story of families searching for the bodies and bones of their relatives murdered by forces in Kurdistan. For this extraordinary film which put the filmmaker Vazy at personal risk, we would like to award the special documentary Jury Award for Excellence in Filmmaking to the film well. Thank you, Barbara and Allison. The next uh, judge that we're going to bring up uh, uh, is Monica Stevenson. Uh, she is over the best equestrian features and shorts. Um, we, we were going to have Elma Garcia, but she had a death in her family. And Monica is just the perfect person to come up and step in. And she's just so wonderfully come to the stage to help. Thank you so much. So thank you very much. Um, it's a pleasure to be here. And I think as everybody has, I want to thank Bo and Kirk um, for all that they've done, not just this weekend, but all the time they put into it, coming up to it. And as you mentioned, the hat was passed to me by Alma. Uh, thank you, Alma. Um, and it's, I, I think it is interesting. I've only been in Toronto for three years, and I have seen how much more popular this uh, festival has become every year. You know, the quality of the films gets better. The quality of the festivities gets better. You know, increases in volume and participation. So thank you very much. 
And um, I think more than anything, we have to thank the volunteers. Yes. Because... Um, <laughs> An event this complex uh, could never happen without people tirelessly contributing. And it's been a real treat to rub shoulders with all the people that are in, in our industry here this weekend. Um, there are two categories in the equestrian division. There was the feature and the equestrian short documentary. And um, it was a very, very inspiring group of films for me to watch with extremely close competition. Um, to coin a phrase if I can, the race was neck and neck to finish. Um, <laughs> There were a lot of gems of many varying subjects in every category, and after a lot of deliberation, in fact, I actually only reached my decision this afternoon, um, they, I realized that just as many other people have, I have to kind of honor not just the winners, but the participants. Um, one of my all-time favorites in the short category was a film called Riding High by a director, an Australian director named Hannah Brooks. It was a um, humor-filled story about the rise of the Australian three-day eventing team to the Olympic levels. And one of the things I found amazing was that in, it took place in the uh, mid-50s, it started in the mid-50s, and in only 18 months, the Australians brought their team of four riders who were previously just stock cowboys and polo riders. They brought them to win fourth place in the uh, Stockholm Olympics for um, three-day eventing. And I don't know how many of you were riders, but to think that in the space of a year and a half you could accrue the skills necessary for Olympic level dressage and show jumping, it's just kind of unbelievable. Um, but it, it speaks to, I think, that um, moxie and guts that we know that all the Australians have, so congratulations to them. Um, but the, the big winner in this category, the best equestrian short documentary, goes to Horse Packer, which is by a um, USA director. And this little film follows Travis um, in his newly appointed position as the lead packer on the west side of the Rocky Mountain National Park. Um, I found it very, very beautifully filmed, and um, in the space of 14 minutes, it was concisely and uh, beautifully developed. Um, it's consistently beautiful footage of a gorgeous place. Uh, it's an interesting story, and it's narrated by Travis himself. He has a magnificently charismatic sense of humor, and he's just, I mean, I was just drawn to him incredibly. I loved hearing his, his story and watching his adventure, and I just thought that Matthew very solidly used the medium of film in 14 minutes to tell this lovely story of Travis. So Yay. congratulations to Matthew. <laughs> Um, and the second category was the best full-length equestrian documentary. And that was an even closer and more nail-biting race. Um, there was a very interesting film from um, the Netherlands, which was called Golden Jeans, directed by Annette van Tricht. And um, actually had to put a quick call out on Facebook this afternoon to any of my Dutch friends who could tell me how in the world I pronounced van Tricht. But there you go. Um, what could have been a dry movie was presented in a very emotional and extremely interesting and informative manner. I learned a great deal. Um, it's about show jumping and show jumping breeding. And so that was a lovely film. Um, the other documentary, which I cannot forget to mention, was called The Wild Ponies of Chinkti by Kurt Laha or Dryden and Todd Nessero. It's a story about the pony pennings on Chinkti Island and about a not-for-profit called The Feather Fund which um, awards deserving young kids, you know, the first pony of their lifetime. So that was a really, really nice little film. But the first place prize goes to another film from the Netherlands called The Story of Totilas. Yay! <laughs> this film is also by Rita van Tricht. Um, it's a film about the most talked about horse in the world. He has been called at times the horse of the century. Um, he arrived, performed, and conquered the dressage world with his rider, Edward Gall, and he won the hearts of millions, whether they're equestrian aficionados or not. Um, it's a story of a once-in-a-lifetime, world-class athlete who literally just happened to be a horse. Um, this, this film is the story of his rise and his ultimate fall, and one of the things that I was really taken by um, towards the end was 
how he was at the hands of man. You know, he he loved his work. There's no doubt he, he's not a dressage competitor anymore, but he absolutely loved his dressage work. And one of the comments in the film was that um, he would saddle himself up if he could. And um, it's obvious, by the way, where he performs that that's true. But, you know, he is at the hands of man or was at the hands of man, and I felt quite sorry for him at the end, but um, that's for you to find out when you see the movie. Um, it was a great movie. The soundtrack was really suspenseful, and it tied in perfectly with the development. So congratulations to Aneta for winning first prize. Next, I'd like to uh, welcome to the stage Mr. Kai Elijah ha Hamilton. Uh, we've started a new category, or a, kind of a group of categories this year, uh, and that's the best actor, actress. And uh, there's no one in the world that I think could better represent best actor, <laughs> actress than Mr. Kai Elijah Hamilton. Please welcome to the stage. Thank you. Well, how are y'all doing tonight? You can do a little better than that. I said, how are you doing tonight? And we go. I feel very, very honored to um, be up here tonight amongst you and be um, a part of this film festival. And I mean that from the bottom of my heart. I was raised here in Western North Carolina, just down the road in Saluda. And um, I'm a writer, director, actor, artist, aren't we all, I guess? Um, <laughs> so, um, you know, to me, film is art, and that's important. It's a sounding board for us artists. Um, and I, I love, I'm very touched by this festival being, this year in particular, very um, thought-provoking and controversial, um, a lot of great subjects, and um, I love that we as artists have have a voice in film, and that's so important to me. Um, I, ever since I was a little boy, I was enamored by film, and I've been in plays, films, short films, on stage, and I think it kind of takes an actor to understand what it is like to be an actor, to, to, to go there. Um, and I've put myself there. I know what it's like to be raw and real, or comedic or the balance of the two or what have you. So I took this very, very seriously and when Bo and Kirk, who I adore, thank you so much for letting me do this. I mean that from the bottom of my heart. Um, we met in their, or I met in his office and I was just like, well, how can I help? And I threw out there, have y'all ever thought of doing acting awards? And it was very passive. And then I got a ring ring or a text, hey, we really like that idea. So, here I am, so I'm very fortunate to be here, and I literally watched every <laughs> film. <laughs> yes, I literally did some twice. Yeah, um, I cannot. I've got I've got the envelopes in here, y'all. The suspense is building. I'm telling you, <laughs> but I'm gonna hurry. Um, let's see. I have to mention the judges. This was purely mathematical. Um, I had four judges, one including myself. Um, that watched these nominations. So it wasn't like I'm picking my own or this person is picking theirs, it was mathematically done. Um, so it was the collective vote for these winners here. Um, I've heard from several of the directors and even some actors on Facebook that are discovering Tryon and this festival because of us doing these awards. So that's extremely important. Just so you know, they're sharing, you know, the Facebook posts and all of that. So um, I'm so happy to know that it has worked. You know that that it is getting this festival out there. Anyway, the judges that I selected were Steve Balderson. He is a famous independent director. He directed Firecracker, which um, Roger Ebert called Brilliant, so he's a wonderful, wonderful guy. Um, you might know him. Um, Lavin Cuddy, he's sitting right down there on the front row. <laughs> Myself, and uh, Devin Ray Villarreal, who is a talented actress in um, Asheville. Um, she's, I can't sing her praises enough, she's fantastic. She um, was called one of Asheville's greatest actresses by Mountain Express, and I just so happened to write reviews for Mountain Express. So, <laughs> um, 
So here we go. Without further ado, let's see here. I've got the envelopes and etc. See if I can do this one-handed. <laughs> I've been waiting for this a long time. Oh my God! Let's do that. What a great idea. <laughs> Yeah, they're they're like they're like waiting on this. They don't know. They really don't, y'all. <laughs> no one really knows right now. All right, so here we go. Best featured actor in a short film. Um, we have Thomas Azar or Azar in in a room at the end edge of infinity. These are the nominees now. Nominees. Um, Abdul Reza Parse in Pine, Victor Rivera in Somnium. No, these are the nominees, y'all. <laughs> All right, and the winner is somewhere. Oh my God, where is it? She's laying down there somewhere. Oh, here it is. It's right where it should be. We got this. All right, here we go. And if the representative of said film is here, or the actor by chance, please come up here. Abdul Reza Parse and Pine. And uh, I'll give this to them in order to mail it to him or what have you. Next up, we have Best Featured Actress in a Short Film. All of these, these are extraordinary performers, I'm telling y'all. They really, really are. So, um, it, it's an honor to be nominated. It certainly is. They, they were neck and neck in some of these. Um, so, here we go. Um, the first nominee is Mimi Indwini um, in Dishonor. Hadas Niklu in The Mother of Lambs, and Christy Ray in Lorelei. And the winner is... Mamie Nanduini in Tisano. Mimi's performance. She is truly amazing for any of you that saw her, her, her uh, in the film. Um, and it, it's, a, it's an honor that you guys recognized her. Um, it's the first time of any festival that's recognized her acting, and it will be the last. So thank you so much. to the feature links here and uh, we're starting with the supporting best supporting actor the nominees are George Nikitakis in Detainee X Jean-Francois Pabouil in The Silence and Jason Ritter in The Tale and the winner is Jean-Francois Pabouil in The Silence. <laughs> yeah, it is. It's so cool to have tallied these and be like, wow, really cool. All right, <laughs> here we go. Best Supporting Actress in a Feature Film. The nominees are Frances Conroy in The Tale, Isabel Nalis in The Tale, and Sandy Silver in The Astronaut. And the winner is Frances Conroy in The Tale. Frances in The Tale. Yes, yeah, too fast. Awesome, it's really hard to play the villain, y'all, and in just a few scenes, I feel like she conveyed that performance just dead on. If you 
you haven't seen the tail, watch it. It's powerful. Best actor in a feature film. Um, Penn and Bray in The Astronaut. Eric Odom in Luke and Joe. And Reza Cholet in Detainee X. And the winner is Reza Cholet in Detainee X. I know for certain he's going to love this. I've actually talked to him via Facebook because I was needing to know how to pronounce his name and so forth. And he was so, so excited. And he's going to really love this. He doesn't know he won, but he will tonight. Thank you. <laughs> Very sweet guy. All right. And the final award I'm giving tonight is um, Best Actress. And these women are, are very strong, very powerful, and very fabulous. So here we go. We have Laura Dern in The Tale. We have Shiva Nagar in Becoming Burlesque. And Yuvia Storm in The Astronaut. All right, here we go. And the winner is. Laura Dern on the tail. Come on down, Laura. We will gladly accept this award on Laura's behalf. She was fantastic. And I really do thank all of y'all tonight. It means a lot. Again, and one more round of applause for all of the actors. Thank you, Guy. That's awesome. Uh, our, our, next, uh, our next category is uh, our best feature film uh, for Mr. Jonathan Brownlee. Come on up here, Mr. Jonathan Brownlee. Thank you, everybody. Um, for those of you uh, that I have met, thank you again for your kind hospitality. Thank you to Bo and Kirk again, and all the wonderful people here at Tryon, which is now, as we discovered, I'm from Toronto, but I live in Texas, so I needed a third T, so Tryon's done it. Thank you very much. Uh, I think Deborah and I figured that out last year. Uh, last year, my film, Three Days in August, was honored with this award. Thank you very much. Um, and I had the great fortune to come to Tryon for the first time. I actually had to look it up on the map. I had no idea where Tryon was, but I'm glad that I did. Uh, in the last, I guess, 60 days or so, I've been to three film festivals. I was at Venice, uh, then I went to Toronto, and then I came here, and I have to say, honestly, this is my favorite of the three. Uh, it's just it's so much fun. Uh, the little festivals can be you know, very impersonal. Um, they're wonderful, but something about coming here, going and having a beer, and eating a burger, and hanging out with people, and it's, it's what you guys do really well, so thank you. Um, you know, full-length uh, feature Filmmakers are a very curious type of, of storytellers. I mean, you have to be brave, um, unwavering, singular in your vision, uh, and it, it's a marathon and not a sprint. Um, before announcing this year's winner, I also wanted to give a couple of uh, special mentions. Um, you actually men mentioned Totalists, which I thought uh, was not my category at all, but uh, one of the great things as a filmmaker coming to film festivals is the opportunity to be educated and, and learn things. And I was fascinated by that story. In fact, you know, as a narrative feature filmmaker, I'm like, this would make a great narrative feature, right? So my head is spinning a little bit on that one. Um, it's been mentioned a few times here, but um, I also wanted to, to mention uh, Buna Muhammad's Detainee X which is uh, an incredibly bold and brave statement, um, especially in sort of the, the current landscape that, that we sit in, um, the landscape of being a Muslim in America, um, and a film that, that we should all watch so we truly understand how to protect people's right to life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. So I, I really appreciated the opportunity to see that film. Congratulations to Buna. The second film I wanted to, to receive an honorable mention um, demonstrates a, a, another filmmaker's bold vision 
on art and technique and that narrative can be told in so many different ways. So I really wanted to give an honorable mention to Joshua Overbay's Luke and Joe. Congratulations. Uh, it was here. It's an amazing film and, and a very great way to tell narrative. So congratulations. Um, this year's recipient for best full-length feature film possesses all the qualities that I look for not only as a fellow filmmaker, but also as an audience member. Um, vision, story, true craft, um, emotion, and perhaps, you know, most importantly, um, the courage and commitment to bring hard and very often uncomfortable stories to the screen. And even when that story exposes and lays bare one's own traumatic and emotional experience for the greater good. So this year's best full-length feature film is Jennifer Fox's The Tale. There's not too much to say um, about this uh, this process and, and how we're doing it. There's so good, but Frank Callow, can you just come to the stage to do best overall? There's so much to say, but I'm, I think Frank's going to probably say. Thank you very much. Uh, I got to know a lot of people here. This is my fifth year here. It's the fourth year for the uh, film festival, but there was a year before prepping it. And so I came in and I was lucky enough to my friend Lava to invite me to meet Bo, Kurt, and start this process happening. <laughs> you guys can switch sides. <laughs> but with my category here tonight is best overall. And I know at any film festival, large, medium, small, you're not gonna see every film. And we do, I do, like the, the acting uh, uh, award presenter, had to see all the films, so did I. There were shorts, documentaries, features, every category. And I know as audience members, you're not, you're not gonna see them all. Because you can only see so much when you get burned out yourself watching all these films. So you pick and you choose, you pick and you choose. But what I found in this year's overall selection is a theme. That every voice, young, old, beginner, amateur, professional, is that we better wake up. Because there's a lot of things that are happening that we're starting to hear. And I'm seeing it in this voice. And that's what this film festival provides, is a voice. And I, we all know what's going on. But again, it made me aware that after seeing all these films, no politicians involved, nothing involved. I'm just saying we better wake up because that's what the theme of this whole, all these films were. There were love stories, there was political stories, but it's the voices that were here. That are, that's, that's, what's, that's what's making the contemporary. So there's a lot of major films I got, I got to see. I love them all, I love the process. I'm a filmmaker myself. I enjoy that process so much. And I was honored because I just did a trailer that I promoted for, uh, for, for some investors, and they allowed me to screen it here uh, opening night at the gala. And it was so awesome. And, uh, and it was the first time, we just finished cutting it, it was the first time it was presented, so it allowed me to present my voice to hear it for the first time in front of a good audience like this. And, and I think it was well received. So I want to thank you guys for that opportunity as well. And this is a, all film, 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 film festivals are different. And I just wanted to do an honorary, honorary mention to a young lady who I wanted, he was here. And Gail, can you stand up for Consider Love? Can you stand up, are you up here? Is Gail here? I saw her a little bit ago. Oh, she must have just left, okay. Uh, I wanted to wish her good luck because uh, she's a young, up and coming writer. And I saw her outside talking, promoting her work. I thought she was still here, so I just want to say good luck to you and keep writing because it's going to happen for you. Okay? So the film that I chose as best overall, and last year was a short, which was uh, Dial's Bound, which I thought was lovely. It had a great message as well. 
And this year, I want to choose a feature film. And to me, I thought it was fun. I thought it was courageous. It's contemporary. It makes a statement. It's fun. You can tell the actors had a great time working on it. I'm going to go with Become a Bolesque. Thank you very much. Ladies and gentlemen, that concludes uh, the 2018 Tryon International Film Festival. Uh, we're going to make sure we get all these awards to all the recipients. Obviously, a lot of them are international and uh, could not be with us. Um, but thank you again uh, for the town of uh, Tryon for your continuing support uh, of, of, of our project. And, you know, Tryon is, uh, you know, they're, they're, they're with us the whole time. Uh, you know, the mayor is very uh, supportive, the town manager, Zach Olis. Uh, Meg Rogers, and so thank you uh, for the community uh, to continue to uh, let us uh, do this event. Um, Greg, do you have anything closing? I'm, I'm just, I'm, I'm so glad that the, the, this weekend seemed very uh, seamless, uh, seemed to be, I, I was constantly standing around thinking there's fires going on just because that's in, in the past, but this, this weekend seemed to be very smooth, and I, so I hope the audience felt that way. Uh, we welcome your feedback always so we can make things better, um, but you know, from the Tri-National Film Festival, thank you so much for your continuing support. Thank you. I agree with everything that Bo said. And uh, I, I remind, it reminds me of a conversation that we had with Bernard, uh, the importance of the smaller film festivals in the entire circuit around the world. And we, we do believe that once we hit year five, and we go beyond that thing, we will become a very notable film festival in the world. And uh, so we're all learning uh, about how this whole process works. It's very hard to do, it takes all year long. It, it takes, and we, we promise the world when we have nothing in our pockets to, to deliver it, it all comes together at the end. So I just thank you very much for coming. And it's so nice to look out here and see so many people here this evening. It just says to ourselves that yeah, we can do this again next year. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you.